Hey, what's up folks? So like any Pokemon player, I went through three distinct phases when it comes to Pokemon stats. Phase one, ignore anything to do with stats at all, since it's about hitting things really hard with Hyper Beam. Oh, you wanna learn Swords Dance, which does zero damage? No, I don't think so. Phase two, you start realizing that your silly opponent who uses Swords Dance seems to be hitting way harder, and after enough trips back to the Pokemon Center, you start realizing maybe there's something to this stats thing after all. In phase three, you fully understand that managing your and your opponent's stats are not just helpful, but are make or break to mastering the game. So I guess I'm in phase four now, where you study a bunch of math and then start wondering if we actually need all six of the stats that we have in Pokemon today. To answer that question, I scraped data for every single Pokemon stats, the over 1,000 Pokemon that we have today. But let's take a step back. Before we ask that crucial question, do we need all six stats, let's quickly recap what each of the six stats generally mean and how two of them are different from the other four. The first four stats can be nicely captured in this little two by two matrix. On the rows, we have attack or defense, and on the columns, we have whether it's physical or special. Attack and special attack dictate how much damage your Pokemon is going to do to other Pokemon, with the former generally relating to power from attacks making physical contact like fire punch, and the latter generally relating to attacks that don't make physical contact like flamethrower, for example. Defense and special defense dictate how much damage your Pokemon takes from other Pokemon's attacks, again with the former relating to damage taken from attacks making physical contact and the latter relating to damage taken from attacks which do not make physical contact. So a nice neat little story there. As you might expect, there's usually important trade-offs between these metrics that keep the game kind of balanced so that there's not just a Pokemon that's the absolute best in all four of these stats and force players to make really important decisions around team building. More on that later in the video. The other two stats not mentioned yet are a little bit different in the way they factor into the game. The first is speed, which many players consider to be the most important stat in the game because it determines the turn order of which Pokemon moves first, second, third, and fourth. It's a continuous metric, but it acts kind of binary in the sense that as long as your speed is higher than that of the opponent, you'll move first. It doesn't matter if your speed is one point higher or 100 points higher. The last stat is called HP, which is basically how many hit points your Pokemon has, and it shares some functionality with the defense stats in terms of determining how bulky your Pokemon is, but it's crucially different in that it directly impacts your Pokemon's state. That state either being healthy as long as the Pokemon has at least one HP or fainted when it hits zero HP. I will say here that as we go about this journey of smashing these six Pokemon stats into hopefully fewer than six stats, we're gonna be conveniently ignoring the implications that would come from eliminating the speed and HP stats as they exist today. Namely, the turn order implications of the speed stat and the fainted or not fainted status of the health stat. The focus of this video is more, hey, these are the six stats we use to describe Pokemon today. Do we really need all six of those stats or can we come up with some clever method to get that down to fewer than six stats, where each stat still describes some aspect or some nature of the Pokemon? It kind of seems like a tall order, but to start understanding how this might be possible, let's do a little experiment. Let's step back as we often do in math and just suppose that Pokemon have two stats, attack and defense. And suppose that for all Pokemon, if we plot attack and defense, we get this plot. What stands out to you here? It seems like while there's technically two stats, attack and defense, they're very, very correlated with each other. The higher that attack, the lower the defense and vice versa. An extra point of attack roughly comes at the cost of a loss of a point in defense. So what if? What if we engineer a new stat, which is going to be defense minus attack? Something we would call defense advantage for lack of a more creative term here. What we find is that it's exactly the weakly attacking bulky mons, which have a high positive value for this new metric. And it's exactly and only the strong attacking frail mons, which have a very negative value for this metric. Using this single metric, we've essentially captured both the attack and defense, reducing our two stat system here into a much more streamlined one stat system. And this is the really basic math, which is the foundation of a cool method in math called principal component analysis. A scary sounding name and really not something you need to worry about at all to understand and appreciate what comes next. But if you are interested, I'll post a couple links below to some videos explaining this stuff. 
This method is going to look for correlations and patterns between the existing six stats in Pokemon. And once we identify those patterns, we can combine the existing stats in clever but simple ways to come up with a much smaller set of stats that captures most of the information that's present among all six stats over all over 1,000 of the Pokemon we have today. All we really need to know about this method is that it generates a series of what are called principal components, which we can just call for the remainder of this video team building archetypes, for reasons that are going to become clear real soon. Each archetype is going to be a weighted combination of the existing six stats, and the weights on each of those existing six stats are cleverly chosen by the method to again capture as much variation as we can that exists out there in the existing stats in the existing Pokémon. For example, we see that the first archetype that's found by this method, by itself, already captures 43% of the variation across all of the stats across all these Pokémon. And it's made up of a pretty equal weighted combination of all six existing stats, meaning that this archetype generally separates the good Pokémon from the generally bad Pokémon, the generally high base stat Pokémon from the generally low base stat Pokémon. Backing that up, we see that the Mons with the highest values of this first archetype are legendaries like Groudon, Arceus, and Maridon, and the ones with the lowest values are the forgettable or early route Mons that people never use like Weedle, Caterpie, and Magikarp. That's what I find so fascinating about this method, is that it independently, without being told to recreate the archetypes that competitive players already talk about, does end up recreating those archetypes and reveals those archetypes to us. To see that even more, let's look at the second principal component, which gets us up to explaining almost two-thirds of all of the stats variation in the game. This archetype is focused on separating the high defense low speed mons from the low defense high speed mons which we colloquially usually call the slow tanks, think things like Stakataka, Regirock, Avalug, versus the frail speedsters, things like Regieleki, Fluttermane. Note here that frail is just talking about the defense stat and not the special defense stat. By the time we get to the fourth team building archetype, we're already explaining nearly 90% of all the variation in the game, which is a pretty cool deal. You get to explain 90% of all the stats variation that exists in the game with just 67% of the stats needed. Four stats instead of six. That fourth archetype is pretty cool too, focusing on separating the high HP but low defense and low speed mons like Regidrago and Blissey, calling these stamina walls since they're walls but only because of their high HP. Separating those from the low HP but high defense and high speed mons like Kartana and Iron Bundle, which we're going to call the Iron Wisps which, no, is not a cool new future Paradox Pokémon, but instead refers to the fact that they have good defense and speed, but aren't so great on the HP side. It is important to note here that even though we've explained almost 90% of the stat variation in the game, that still does leave 10%, which is not nothing. We're still missing some aspects of the stat spread using just these four newly engineered stats instead of all six that existed before. And so we're at a point where we can use these four stats instead, totally hand-waving and ignoring all the wacky ways this would break the rest of the game, and we can give a cool new name to each of these stats based on what archetype it is highlighting. The first of these new stats I think could just be called Base Power, since that aptly vague name kind of matches the notion that this new stat generally says if the existing six stats are good or bad, separating generally good mons from generally bad mons. The second new stat we can call Bulk, because it captures the distinction between quick but frail Pokémon versus their slow but bulky counterparts. The third archetype I had the most trouble with naming, but when I thought about it, it looks like it generally separates Mons with great special stats, both special attack and special defense, but having low attack, separates those from the group of Mons who have low special stats but very high attack. I really don't want to call this just the special stat for historical reasons, so let's call it the special prowess stat. If you can come up with better names for these, and I'm sure you can, feel free to leave them in the comments section below. The final new stat, as mentioned before, separates the Iron Wisps, those Pokémon with low HP, high defense, and high speed, from the Stamina Walls, which have high HP, low defense, and low speed. So we're going to call this the Natural Stamina stat, since this stat is so intimately tied with HP. But the natural part implies that having a low value means your stamina might come from other places, namely the higher defense or higher speed. And so there you have it, four new stats that capture most, the majority of the variation in the existing six stats. Base power, bulk, special prowess, and stamina. 
One last thing I'll mention here is that these new stats are unexpectedly really helpful for some pretty basic team building. I've noticed while watching way too many Pokemon YouTube videos that when folks are team building, they usually talk in the language of these archetypes anyways, like I want a frail attacker or I want a slow tank on my team. These new stats let us select for those team members much more directly. For example, let's say that I'm trying to add a member to my team who is a frail speedster since I want to be able to move first, a stamina wall since I want some good natural bulk for longevity and to account for the lower defense from the previous requirement, and also I want just a generally good Pokemon to give myself decent odds of winning the battle. Well, as it stands, we can translate that ask into something directly in our new four stat system, asking for something that has very low bulk, very high stamina, and a very high base power. Getting rid of all the legendary Pokemon to keep this a little bit more grounded, we find a list of Pokemon with these two being at the top. The numbers in parentheses are its percentile ranking for how each of the six existing stats falls versus all the other Pokemon in the game. So we see Volcarona and Goldengo. They certainly have what we're looking for, having similar HP at the 82nd percentile of all Pokemon, really good. They're both reasonably fast, with Volcarona being actually way faster, but Goldengo is still clocks in at the 75% percentile of speed. And they're both, as far as I can tell in my novice understanding, pretty good Pokemon. And so that's all folks, I hope you enjoy this video and have some thoughts to share in the comments section below. To end the video, I'll flash on the screen the exact formulas for each new stat as a function of the existing stats if you want to play around with them on your own. Thanks for watching, like and subscribe for more videos just like this, and I'll see all you wonderful people next time.